Hi. Wow, I haven't done a voice video since... Anyway, this is Client Gen, which is uh, a challenge wherein you go to a website, a specific website that'll be linked in the description, that has a random clan generator on it. You get your randomized clan, and then you draw the cats in it, and you make characters out of them. Cool. Uh, most people, when they do this, they will draw the characters, and then they'll draw the territory, talk a little bit about the clan itself. I decided to take a little bit of a different angle with it, and I decided to draw family trees instead, and then flesh out those family trees where there's a few characters missing. So let's get started. So this is Willow Clan, and then up at the top it says the cooperative and motivated. That's sort of a guideline to keep in mind when making the characters. I've tried to give each of the characters something that they're either very passionate about or something that they very strongly believe in. Uh, just not as a hard rule, but kind of as a guiding force. So they're probably the only clan in their area. I imagine this is sort of like a swampy type Florida area. Uh, and I've decided that since they're cooperative, that means they really don't mind working with uh, loners, rogues, kitty pets, etc. They probably don't mind, you know, outside clan relationships, as long as you're still loyal to the clan at the end of the day. So the way I've decided to work out the biological relationships here, I, I kind of looked at their colors and tried to figure out what made the most sense. Um, I've decided that as they're both chocolate-based, with Lilac being a dilute of chocolate, Frostleaf and Lion Nose are sisters, and then Rainstream is their mom. Uh, I saw these two ginger cats, Foxstar and Russet Throat, and I decided they're siblings. And then uh, for Firepaw and Egret Paw, one of them's orange, one of them is white, so I see White Throat there. Foxstar, White Throat are mates. Firepaw and Egret Paw are their kits. After that, we have Slug Claw, Bleak Stripe, and Mist Storm, who have decided are all siblings. Um, Mallowfoot and Slugclaw are mates, with Cinderpaw being their kit. And then Bleakstripe, I don't know, banged a rogue, I guess. We'll go in more into that later. Russetthroat and Miststorm are also mates, because Miststorm's also in the Queen's list. Tansystone joined as a loner, and came to clan already pregnant. And then there's Sandclaw. We'll talk about Sandclaw. So we're starting with Foxstar. You're gonna see me playing with shapes a lot, because my philosophy for designing a new character whole cloth is to kind of figure out who they are as I'm drawing, like as I'm feeling out the shapes, I'm kind of thinking about what that tells me and building on and kind of yes-anding my own shapes there. You see me grabbing a fox for colors because her name is Foxstar, so it's a good way to put her name into her design a little bit. And then I, I made those underlights there in the same shape as the white would be on a fox. Um, I went with a Somali reference for her. She's not a Somali, obviously, um, nor that I designed her to look like one, but she does have a little bit of Somali in her design. As a character, Foxstar is pretty lighthearted, pretty welcoming, uh, relatively young as a leader, but not an inexperienced. And I also have another reference up there. She's very invested in the well-being of her clan, mentally and emotionally, uh, as if not more so than she is with their physical safety. And she's generally just a very pleasant person to be around. There she is. That's Foxstar. Hooray. Second cat here is the deputy, Lion Nose, who uh, I actually drew first. I'm showing these in allegiance order, but I actually drew Lion Nose first because I had the strongest mental image of her. I really like this idea of, um, like, kind of a lighthearted, more playful mentor, and then her, like, buff bodyguard deputy who takes no shit. So this is a very stern, protective, strong character. Think, like, stereotypical earthbender from avatar vibes very sturdy uh knows what she's about knows what she believes kind of thing her shape is based off of british short hairs you see me having to pull in a lilac reference because uh my fursona is also a well they're a blue tortie they're a blue torty, but they look lilac-y, so I always have to be careful with blue in my lilac torties not to make them look too much like my fursona. 
you will also see me at first struggling with how to stylize the stripes because I'm very, because I, I have a hard time stylizing complex patterns. And then I realized I'm not gonna draw these guys more than once. So I just gave them more realistic stripes and felt much more comfortable. <laughs> There's Lion Nose. She is keeping this clan together. I wanted her sister Frostleaf to look very different from her. I thought it would be fun if there was a. I thought it would be fun for me when I drew the family tree if one of them was very big and stocky and one of them was a little bit more thin and small. And also, I just. The name Frostleaf generates kind of a shy, smaller name in my mind. Um, you'll see Lion Nose pop up a little bit a few times because I am trying to make them look somewhat related. For her, I'm, I was thinking very shy, kind of quiet sort of character. Not low self-esteem, but just prefers to keep to herself. Maybe anxious. I like the idea that... I made their mom kind of a jokey, sassy old lady. I like the idea that they, their mom kind of brushes off most concerns. And these two are kind of reactions to that in their own respective ways. Wherein one of them got very anxious about all the problems that aren't getting addressed, and then the other one started addressing all those problems with aggressive enthusiasm and being the rock for the other one. And uh, I also gave her some little flowers there, which is very cute. You'll also see my little palette cats off to the side that are cute. That's Frostleaf. She's so cute. Look at her. Oh, we got my boy. This is Slugclaw. I was looking for references, and I saw the absolute shape of this man. This uh, bangle in the reference. I'm like 99%. That's a bangle. And I was like, I have to capture that shape. I have to do that. I love this. So that inspired the whole character. This is one of the most shaped cats ever. I don't think I fully succeeded in capturing what I like so much about this pose, but I got close. Anyway, Slugclaw is a much more reserved character. Uh, very, I think probably the most suspicious of all of the clan. He's the one who's the most wary of outsiders, which is good to have. You have to have at least one person who is not prone to naivete. Also, watch me struggle with this back leg for a while. I actually cut out a lot of this because this was like most of my time drawing this cat was fucking around with that leg, but I finally gave up and I moved on. He has a very unique cheek shape and also a very unique eyebrow shape, and I briefly considered giving him the little lion blaze mohawk, but I decided against it because I didn't want to have to draw it later when I made their little icons. I know I said I only have to draw them once, but I only have to draw their bodies once. They are going to get little heads when I make the, uh, when I make the family trees. Luckily, he's a black cat, so there's only one color. Well, there's the eyebrow colors and the under eye colors and the ears and stuff, but not any complex markings. And I just pulled up a slug to <laughs> grab some colors from, like the fox, it's his name. And there he is, my little suspicious man. I love him. Next here, we have Russet Throat, who I really like the, the shape of this guy. Uh, another character who I think the design came out pretty cool, especially in the face area. I like this guy. I, I like his little icon, too, especially. Um, his sister, who was a long hair, got a Somali reference. So Russet Throat gets an Abyssinian reference. If you're familiar with cat breeds, Abyssinian is basically just a short hair Somali. And it's purely for the shape of the cats. It's, it's purely to give inspiration. They're not, again, they're not actually those breeds. That's insane. But uh, his personality is generally very duty-bound. Uh, he's- he is allergic to fun, unfortunately. 
he's not necessarily antisocial. He is, like, a nice dude. Uh, unlike Slug, who is a little bit more on the reserve side. But he he's just very, like, he enjoys doing his chores. He gets fulfillment out of things like going on patrol and organizing. He doesn't want to play. He doesn't understand games. But he cares very deeply. He has a little throat white that cuts off there because his name is Throat. And again, it's another little name thing. There he is! There's Russet Throat. The absolute shape of this man. Oh my god! We're on to Sandclaw. Okay, so I was originally thinking about how to tie her into the other families. Um, but... I I started thinking about who she is as a person, like her personality, and I, again, I was just looking up poses. I just, I, I just googled adult cat in Google Images, and and I found this, and I was like, oh, it's a kind of a thoughtful picture. What if I had this cat who was, you know, more of a? What if I had this cat who was more of a philosopher, more of like a deep thinker, maybe vaguely prophetic? And then I, as the more I thought about her, the more I started to laugh at the idea of like. What if there was this cat who spoke in riddles and rhymes and things that maybe were vaguely prophecies, but maybe they're not? And no and no one understands her. No one understands what she's saying. She's very nice. She's she's very helpful, but nobody fucking understands a word she's saying at any given time. It's like it's like Godot from Ace Attorney, but without any of the misogyny. And I I just fell in love with the idea of like, what if she just showed up? What if she just showed up one day <laughs> and she wouldn't leave? She just she just showed up one day. So that's Sandclaw, and I love her so much. Oh, my boy. Whitethroat. He is huge. He's huge. Thankfully, he's also just pure white, so I don't- I didn't feel the need to pose him where you can see most of his body. I would- I could just draw him straight forward. He's white, you're not missing anything. Um, a, a, an art tip for you. Never use just pure white when you're when you're drawing or designing uh, an animal uh, or really anything. Um, it just it just even if you're not drawing against a white background, it just feels wrong. It's too stark. Um, to do a little bit of a different color, like a like an off white. Of course, in my style, even a cat with a solid color has to have a couple of other colors in the eyebrows region and the eyeshadow and the ears and whatnot. And that's not. He's not a van or anything. He just- that's just how I draw cats. Personality-wise, he's a- he's a big old prankster. He's a big old jokester. He's a- he's a big playful guy. I think he likes to sneak up on people and stand right behind them, especially when they're talking about him. He thinks it's really funny. That is Whitethroat. He is huge. And then we have Mallowfoot. Watch me fuck with this tail for six hours. Transform tool, my beloved. As mentioned earlier, Mallowfoot is Slugclaw's mate, so she is- If you're familiar with the, the meme of, like, someone will die of fun, that's very much these two. He He's very 
reserved and he's kind of the clan's grounding a little bit, but she's his grounding. <laughs> she makes sure he doesn't get too carried away, you know? Um, she's very patient with him and she's good at calming him down if he gets a little bit too, if his, if his suspiciousness gets a little bit too unwarranted. Just an infinitely patient lady. Very sweet, very gentle. So what the fuck is a mallow? I looked it up, and it's a type of flower. They're pink. I decided to put a little bit of lavender in her blue to represent that pink a little bit. And then the stripes on the sides of her face and her cheeks, they kind of look like the ones on the inside of the flower. And that's Mallowfoot. Bless her for putting up with the rest of this clan. Uh, we got the two siblings, Egret Paw and Fire Paw. I decided that I wanted to get them together. Um, I'm also drawing these out of order, by the way. I did do the Elder first, but that's okay. I'm showing them in Allegiance. Order. I love drawing fat little babies. Uh, now, in real life, a six-month-old cat, Apprentice Age, is basically an adult. That's the age you get them spayed or neutered. The cats in the references are significantly younger. But that is because in Warriors, Aaron Hunter doesn't do, like, any research and also doesn't care. So we don't just pretend that six-month-old cats are basically children. And it's, and it's, it's, it's fine. It's fine, don't worry about it. So I'm, I'm using little tiny baby references for that. These two are very much troublemakers. They are always getting into stuff. They're always getting up to adventures and sneaking out when they're not supposed to. I feel like they think they're like detectives solving mysteries, but really the mystery is just kind of, you know, following one of the adults around while they're doing their daily tasks and whispering to each other, or they'll go out and just start digging random holes, how kids do, you know, looking for buried treasure or whatever it is cats would be looking for when they dig, st when they dig shit up. Egret Paw's description says that he is sparse-haired, and I don't know what that means. So I've chosen to interpret that here as not short hair, because both of his parents are long hairs, so he can't be a short hair. So I've chosen to interpret it instead as, like, thin hair, as opposed to his dad's, like, thick, puffy hair. Um, so he has that kind of long hair oriental... Uh, floppiness to him. I describe cats like this as perpetually looking wet. There they go. That's them. They're always getting into shit. As much as I love drawing fat little babies, I did want to stagger the apprentice's age just a little bit. So I have the next apprentice, Cinderpaw, who is older. He is in that stage of cat teenagerhood where he's the, the right size for an adult but his proportions are not all correct yet. He's still in that funny, lanky stage of kitten. He will probably be a warrior in the next month or so. I really like this drawing. I think this guy's my one of my favorites, and his character's one of my favorites too. He has some traces of his dad's eyebrows in there, his dad's big, head, big high up cheeks. He is, imagine if Angelica from Rugrats was always lying to the babies, not because she hated them, but because she loved them and she knows they love adventures and she wants them to go have fun. He's saying shit like, oh, there's a there's a ghost by the old willow tree, and then the kids will sneak out and go investigate it. And, I, and either the adults are really happy that they're getting along uh, and he's giving them something to do where they're not bothering anybody, or they're really mad because he sent them out to go explore something in the middle of the night that turned out to be pretty dangerous, but he trusts they'll always get out of it, okay? His expression was really hard to nail. I had a very specific image in mind for how I wanted him to look, and I think I did pretty good at the end. That's him, that's my boy. I think he's probably my favorite of the bunch. 
I also decided to draw all the queens together. This is Bleak Stripe, Tansy Stone, and Mist Storm. Really, really messes me up a lot because Bleak Stripe is the one who's not a tabby and Mist Storm is the one who is a tabby. So the stripe has no stripes and I kept getting them mixed up. So to avoid confusion, I gave them somewhat similar personalities. They're both very light spirited, uh, very talkative, very open, um, very warm, welcoming fellows, which is perfect for Tansy, who's new. She just joined recently. She probably showed up like, hey, I'm going to have kits can I hang out with you guys so I don't die? And then they said, yeah, because because they're cooperative. Of course you can stay with them. And they gave her a name and she chills with them now. And she fits she fits in right right well. She's she's very much, Tansy Stone is a very specific type of person in my brain that's kind of hard to put into words. I can't describe her personality. I can only describe her as someone who drives a Subaru. Like she's the, she's the type of like bisexual who will pick you up over her shoulder. Like if she was a human, she would have like a buzz cut and huge muscles and like a tank top. She has a, a deep gruff voice. Choosing Tansy Stone's color was fun because I liked the stone suffix and I wanted to use stones in her design. So I Googled redstone. And then it pulled up a bunch of Minecraft, so I googled Red Rock instead, and it came up with Red Jasper, which was really cool. It was exactly what I was looking for color-wise, so I used that, and then I realized, hey, her eyes are green! And then I googled Green Jasper and used that for her eyes. Cool! They're, they're making her feel real welcome. It's, it's nice. There they are! There's the three of them. There's the three musketeers. And then we have old lady. I decided I wanted to make her a cheeky grandma. She knows she's old. She can get away with saying anything kind of lady. <laughs> she's like, I've been around long enough. I can do anything. Nobody gives a shit anymore. But uh, even even in her youth, she was uh, a very, a very cheeky sort of sassy motherfucker. Her name's Rainstream. Uh, I designed her tortoiseshell pattern to kind of resemble raindrops. Uh, falling down and then rolling off of her body. She doesn't have any white on her in her description, but she has to have some white on her genetically in order for Frostleaf to make sense. So I gave her a white chin. It's just a little bit. It's just it's just a little bit. So it, it, it's fine. It's it's fine. She still matches the description, but she's got a little bit a little bit of white on her. Just a little bit. I did DreamWorks her expression. I did give her DreamWorks disease. I'm so sorry. It had to happen. It had to happen. That is Rainstream, Willow Clan's only elder, and by god, she is making the best of it. Now we're on to these little icons that I'm gonna be using. I decided to record myself drawing these too, which made the video a lot longer, but I'm glad that I did because it's really fun to watch me, you know, take these designs that I've drawn at angles and then kind of translate that into a more forward uh, position. And I struggled a lot with asking myself, should I do the same expression or should I try to draw them all neutral expression and I decided to kind of go somewhere in between where I, I neutralized them a little bit from what they were but I didn't want them to be totally deadpan I still wanted them to express their personality through their expressions that X up at the top is so that I can realign my symmetry tool which I needed to do very often and you will see if you watch closely or if you watch in slow motion a few times where I did absentmindedly erase it <laughs> and then mess around and fuck around for a while, unable to use the symmetry tool, suffering. So while this is going, I'm going to talk a little bit about the family tree stuff because I have some things to say that I won't have time to when we get there. My plan for the family trees is to quote unquote complete them, so to like fill in parents where there's siblings, draw mates for kits, and then draw kits for the queens because. Hello, my real life cat is here. Hi! Because 
the, the website generated no kits. So, hello kitty, hello. Hello, I love you too. You can't have my chair right now. I'm recording. I'm so sorry. She's so upset. She's so upset. Um, the thing with genetics and cartoony character designs is that some things are still true to real genetics. Black, ginger, torty, etc. I am keeping those in mind. Also, hi, I'm a real-life geneticist. My degree is in evolutionary biology, so it's more- I'm more formally trained in population genetics, but I do know some classical Mendelian genetics. But some traits, you know, like facial traits resembling parents, that's intuitive. They're just gradient traits, they're just polygenetic gradient traits. There's, but there's also a couple of unrealistic aspects. Uh, namely things like eyebrows, which cats don't have, cartoony exaggerated shapes of their cheek fluff, stylized stripes, um, that whole sort of thing. So it's always very fun to try to, you know, it's not just a matter of knowing genetics, it's also a matter of having fun with the shapes and trying to make the cats look related. The other thing is eye colors. In real life, we don't know how cat eye color is passed. Obviously, there has to be some hereditary factor, and I, I won't go into the whole speech, because I did do a research paper on this in, in college, but uh, we have no idea what, what passes on cat eye colors, or at least we didn't last time I looked into the research. So, realistically, if you're going pure realism, you can pick, within reason, pretty much any eye color for any cat, with very little exception. Uh, like blue and stuff like that. But for character design, you want to try to pick the same eye color or a similar eye color to the parents. So you'll see me kind of adhere to that a little bit when we get to the family trees. Hey, look! Family trees! So we're starting with the Lion Nose, Frost Leaf, and their mom, Rainstream. Um, so in this case, since their mom was a big round cat, I needed a more oriental-shaped, small, thinner cat to uh, make Frost Leaf make any sense. I didn't want him to die. I thought that was kind of a cheap reason for the the kid to be anxious and, and stern, sturdy, respectively. Um, so I decided, what, what, if, what if he's, a, like, a loner or something? What if she's a single mom? And then I, I really, I'm a sucker for the Thomas O'Malley type. That you know, the Jake, the Jakes of the world. The kind of charming drifter loner comes in, comes out. So I've decided that what if, what if he was, you know, this, this charming loner trope. They had a short-lived whirlwind romance, no hard feelings when he left. The kind of boyfriend you have for the fun and thrill, with no delusions of settling down, you know? Uh, his name's Mouser, by the way, and I made him cinnamon because the others were all chocolate, so I thought it would be fun. I could have just made him black and say he carries something. This was an opportunity to make a cinnamon cat, so I, I ran with it. And yeah, of course, he has a little bit of white there so that we can have our homozygosity in Frostleaf. Look at that, beautiful little family, if you can call it that. He does not care. After that, we have another small little one. We've got Tansy Stone's family. Tansy also obviously begged a loner because she came to the clan afterward. She's a big round cat. I love drawing huge cats. So if she's big and round, I made her mate big and pointy. And I say mate with a lot of quotation marks. I don't think there was any love here. I think they were just horny in the same place at the same time. Also, I meant to give him some scars, and then I forgot. That's okay. We haven't had a single 
brown tabby in this entire video. So I was gonna make him a brown tabby. And then my friend walked in on me drawing and was like, hey, is that Tiger Star? So I decided not to make him a brown tabby, but that's okay. That gives us some dilute to play with. Uh, his name is Badger, because when I drew his white, he kind of looked like a badger. So here are the kids. I decided to go for one boy and one girl. With that combination, with the mom being ginger and the dad being a black-based, there's really only one way that can go. We have to have a ginger-based boy and a tortoiseshell slash calico daughter. So the little boy is Sun Kit. He is aggressively curious and nosy. The daughter is Slate Kit. She's a lot bigger. He's kind of the runt, like she took up a lot of the womb space and nutrients. It happens, shrug. Um, she's definitely the leader of the two. She's also very curious, but in a little bit more of a bratty kind of way. Like, he's a future scientist, she's more of a gossiper, but they both do have that, 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 that spirit in them of discovery. She's named Slate Kit because of the, the shade of blue that I used there on her. They go. That's them. And now, for the big one! So for Fox and Russet's parents, I was thinking about what kind of parents would result in these very, like, um, duty-bound kids, you know, where one of them is very, like, more serious duty-bound, the other one is very, like, a good leader, um, very attentive, and I was thinking about, I was thinking, what if the mom was, like, a pre the previous medicine cat, you know? Very religious, very devout. And then the dad's very Mufasa type, more of the, the the warm, kingly, big, 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 big beard, big hugs. You know, he gives me Mufasa vibes. He gives me Mufasa vibes. And once again, Shades of Ginger are evil, and it's hard to get so many of them. But one of the kids has a lot of saturation and a lot of contrast, the other one doesn't. So I went with that for the parents, where one of them has a lot of saturation and contrast and one of them doesn't, uh, more so than the kids. The Fox and Russet's parents are named, uh, the mom is Ginger Frost, the dad is Rustheart. And then we have the three siblings here, uh, and these two have Cinderpaw. So Cinderpaw's already done. But then we have to come up with the parents for these guys. And I was- again, we're up against disparate personalities. We have these two pretty lighthearted characters and the one more suspicious loner type, so what could have caused this? And also, we have- we've had enough rogues and loners at this point. We had, uh, Fox and Rust's parents were clan cats. These guys are also gonna be clan cats. I went with this idea of the dad being kind of like a grounding pillar for the mom, who is more anxious, um, which also kind of reminds me of Slug Claws and Mellow's relationship a little bit, except it's less anxiety and more, like, getting out of your bubble. Once again, we had no brown tabbies, so I finally drew some brown tabbies. We gotta have them in there somewhere. I also gave mom a little bit of white for funsies. So the dad's named Tiger because... I mean, fucking look at him. He is Tiger Fur, and then the mom is Bramble Wind. I really like the idea of the dad being, like, very strongly competitive. And then when he died first, between him and, and his mate, the whole family kind of coped by joking, Oh, of course he always has to be the first at everything. On to some kids here. This is going to be uh, Russet Throat and Miss Storm's kid. Their son is Dandelion Kit. He was actually originally Sun Kit, but then I switched their names because he looks more Dandelion, the other one looks more Sun. He is a feisty little guy who will become leader someday, or at least that's what he keeps saying. He's very determined. As for his sister, she will also definitely be leader someday. They're both very competitive, and when they're still kits, it's kind of a rough kind of competitive. But as they get older, they mellow out, it becomes more friendly, keep each other on their toes kind of thing. Uh, as for which one eventually becomes leader? 
Neither. Somebody else entirely. But by then, they both had character development, and it doesn't bother them so much. Uh, her name's Mudkit, by the way. Her torty marks are low-key inspired by mud smeared on soldiers. I had a kind of guerrilla warfare tone in mind for her. Maybe a little weird for a toddler character, but she won't be a toddler for long. And then there's Bleak Stripe. I ran out of room, I had to get a little bit creative with the shape here. He is also another loner because I, I had this idea for him when I was drawing him and feeling out his shape. He seemed kind of anxious and I, I started to really like the idea that he kind of knows the clans are a cult and he's he was trying to get Bleak Stripe out and Bleak Stripe in return was trying to get him to join and it sadly it didn't work out he wouldn't stay she wouldn't go he he's still worried about her to this day i also made him a brown tabby because though they do look kind of plain there's a lot you can do genetically with a brown tabby and also i was sick of drawing tortoise shells and i wanted them to have a daughter his name's jasper their daughter is raven kit she also entirely unrelated to her father who she's never met she also has some reservations about being in a clan she's also very anxious she definitely got his nerves i just really like father-daughter parallels. I think that they're fun. That's everyone. I came up with a lot of cats for this, and I had a lot of fun. Um, next time I do a big family tree like this, it'll probably be fire stars. I really like drawing family trees, and I love drawing these little icons, but uh, this kind of family tree stuff, I'm absolutely willing to draw for you, by the way, if you ever want to hit me up. I do have my Tumblr in the description. You can message me there. I take commissions in general, and I will happily throw together something like this for you. But uh, until then, and until the next video, thanks for watching. Bye bye.